Wallace Wong. I'm 27 from Mississauga, Ontario, and people call me the Six Pack Chef. Six Pack Chef. Always rep it, always rock it, because if you don't believe in yourself, who's gonna believe in you, right? I wanna be a food company, and I wanna be one where people are like, hey, anything made by a Six Pack Chef is gonna be tasty, it's gonna be healthy. Aside from cooking, Ollie, wouldn't it be I so cool for Canada if you could cook for us? A bodybuilder. I have been working at various places. So I went to Alinea, craziest restaurant I've ever looked at, and then went straight to Milan. Who's that? You know who that is? Holy crap! Yo, what's good? What's up, man? It's Wallace. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, pleasure. Welcome to the video. Today we have a special guest, Wallace Wong, also known as the Six Pack Chef. He was on Top Chef Canada. He one chopped, one fridge wars. So safe to say the guy can cook and he also lifts. So he's pretty much your ultimate husband or <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Girl. So welcome. What's up, dude? Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So what are we gonna do today? Uh, we're gonna do two things, but we're gonna start off with a crazy pre-workout reel. Uh, super simple, super sort of gourmet. You can you know impress your girl or anybody that you want. So. We're gonna do some fluffy Japanese souffle pancakes. Those are viral at the moment. But those are like the thick, the thick those ones. Those are thick ones, super okay. fluffy. You don't love me. So we'll do yeah. that, and then we'll do like a post workout meal. Okay, sounds good to me. So All let's right. get started. Let's do it. Oh, I never trust the skinny chef. Yeah, I like that denim, man. Where'd you get that? Super Mario. I love pancakes. Like I'm team mm. pancake all the way. Like screw French toast, screw waffles. Pancakes are where it's at. Like in my opinion, waffles are better though. Just letting you know. Mm -hmm. Just letting you know. So we're we'll gonna be making souffle pancakes. But yes, souffle pancakes. Though. Souffle pancakes. They are way better than regular pancakes. Trust really? Me. Have you ever had them? I've never even heard of them. Okay, so pretty much they are like the mixture of two recipes. Obviously, okay. pancake and a souffle. Yeah. Um, just like the viral Corona that's going on in in uh, New York. Yeah. Um. Souffle pancakes are this thing that came from Japan. Okay. And they're so fluffy, so thick. And the best part about it is anybody can make them at home because okay. you have pretty much everything already. Really, yeah. we've got regular cake flour. We've got a little bit of uh, lactose free skim milk. Okay. But so, you can use like cashew milk, almond yeah, milk. Yeah, cashew milk, almond okay. milk, absolutely. A little bit of vanilla extract, no calories. Great. You can use also hazelnut extract, all that kind of stuff. It needs sweetness in this whole recipe. So yeah. usually it's sugar. We're actually going to go with stevia. Great substitute. And then simply some eggs. So that's it. And that's it. So like, all the ingredients are there, right? For yeah, so everything that you saw earlier, we weighed them out and it's really not a lot. Yeah, I mean, this must only make what, like one or one or maybe two? No, it actually, it'll make at least three. It'll make at least three because of the volume of the egg whites. Because they're in a whip egg white. Exactly, right? which is such a great uh, like a recipe for dieting and everything. Cool. Volume. When you have yeah. macros or volume video, is everything. Volume is key. First things first, we're gonna whip the egg whites. Okay. But to order to whip the egg whites, we gotta crack an egg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack the egg yep. one-handed. We're gonna crack the egg. Egg whites go into your bowl. Okay. The yolk is gonna go into here. Okay. Cool. So you're simply gonna crack the egg on the side, just like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So you're gonna hold it with your thumb and your middle finger, uh, in between the two. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna go that way. Press. Yeah. Okay. So like that. Yeah. And then you're gonna press, and it'll sh open up. And then you're gonna. <laughs> All Take right. your finger and spread it, and then, yeah. Souffle pancakes then, with a crunch, man. Oh. Okay, now do this. You're gonna actually spin them open now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, bro. Yeah, we're going like that. Okay, you can do that, and then yeah. just separate it. I feel quite beta right now. Yolk's in there. Yeah. Shell's in there. All right, well, so one of the key things about uh, making any whipped egg white, yeah. what we call like a meringue or soft peak, is that it won't whip up if there's any fat. Okay. And the only fat in an egg is obviously the yolk. So, so even if there's like little I'll, bits of the yolk, yep. you can, it won't work. Let's just start over. Obviously, you can whip this in a stand mixer. Okay. But we got a workout today. Yeah. So we're gonna get some arm workout. Okay. We're gonna actually whisk this by hand. Okay. To the point where it's gonna be super fluffy. Yeah. Firm peaks. 
Okay. But we'll do this as a challenge. We'll see who can whip it fast enough. Okay. I mean, and I got a lot of wrist and forearm work in high school, so don't don't count me out. Don't count me out. No comment. All right. All right. Three, Three, two, two one. What the hell is a switcheroo, man? Hey, what's up? Oh. This is soft peak. So you can see, like, it just fluffs up just enough, kind of falls over. That's called a soft peak. We're gonna go a little bit more to a firm peak. Since you're all in lockdown with, like, the coronavirus, this is a good. This is, this is a good arm workout. Yeah. A, a good home, home workout. Push ups and then superset with whisk your egg whites to hard, hard peak. Almost. All right, so this is hard. This is my peaks right there. That's what you're looking for. Fluffy, white. And in culinary school, they would actually do it when you know your, your egg whites are done. Yeah. Is you're going to do this. Ready? We're in Dairy Queen right now, eh? I actually felt. Oh, oh, it's good. So that's how you know. Yeah. That's how you know. No, yeah. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Push it. <laughs> this actually, what's the switcheroo method right now you're trying to do? Just left handed, that's it. That's all. Yeah. I'm gonna take that. Yeah, there you take that, yeah. That's good. We're good. Good. How are you feeling? Good, yeah, honey. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so the egg whites are whisked. So now what are we doing with the yolks? Yeah, so now we're gonna make the custard part of it. So okay. the basically first souffle, it's two parts. One is the whipped meringue, yeah. which is the egg whites, and then the custard part. So we take our two yolks. We're just gonna give this a quick beat up. Yeah. And then I'm gonna add... So all this stuff now goes into here? Exactly. Okay. So we're gonna add our stevia, which we're gonna sh you originally uh, if you used regular sugar, yeah. it would have been there, and that's our creaming method. So we just quickly do that, and then we're going to add now our flour. Okay. So for here, what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure we're going to add them slowly so that we don't get any clumps. So oh, I'm just going to You know how the like training partners, you have cooking partners? Yeah. All right, I'm spotting we'll right start now. there. Yeah. Custard spotter. Custard spotter. This seems like it's quite the... Elaborate recipe. Can yeah. this be cooked pretty fast? Would you yeah, say? this is whole, like this, under 10 minutes. Would you say? Yes, you could have put all this thing into like a blender. Okay, it would have been pretty good. Okay. Or in a stand mixer. Okay, same cool. thing with the egg whites. Okay. Add a little bit of milk just to balance it out. Okay, I'm sure you've heard it. Everybody talks about it because of science, very yeah. scientific. And it's very true, but it's also intuitive. Yeah, so like right here, if we were, you know, you can see like, oh, if it's too thick, it's too thin, use what we have in the recipe to adjust for it. So We'll last bit? Up. Yeah, last bit. And then, so it just takes a little, and you can see there's actually um, a spank there. there what do people traditionally like put on top? Because I'm thinking, because yeah. like usually when I make like yes. pancakes, okay. I do like berries, a scoop of Greek yogurt, yep. and some like syrup on top. So, but you pretty much do whatever with this, right? You, can, you use this as your base. Okay. You can also make these savory too, like with eggs and, and like bacon. bacon. Oh, and make all you, all make these as the bun? Yeah, exactly. So, come on. Now it's, now it's there, we're gonna add our baking powder. Yeah. This is gonna be a leavening agent. So we already have leavening in our egg whites. Yeah. We've already whisked this up so it's already volumized, but we're gonna add some baking powder okay. and that's gonna help it get extra airy. We wanna add the last round of vanilla. Vanilla? That's so vanilla, you can, you, you can like use other like sort of extracts, right? Yeah, you can use any extracts you want. You wanna do like, say you wanna make a coffee one. You can do coffee, coffee extract. You guys want like coffee. Okay, so that's it. That's it? Smell that. Okay, I'm kidding, guys. So wait, wait, wait. <laughs> if it gets clumpy a little bit. Yes. Because I feel like if I make it for the first time, yeah, there might be a few clumps here and there. Mm -hmm. I, should, I should restart, or should I? Um, you can restart, or what yeah. you also want to do is you know a strainer, like okay. a very fine strainer. Just, just pour it in, and then and just sort of use a spoon, back of the spoon or okay. spatula, and just wipe it off, and you'll be there. All right, so, all right. We are gonna do now the next thing. So the key here is now something called the folding method. If you make okay. any cakes or anything yeah. with a meringue, yeah. you don't want to just mix the two together. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is you're going to break up all and take all the air out. Okay. So we're simply just going to mix it in as a folding method. So just a little bit of time, like kind of like the, the flour. Yeah. So a little bit of time. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the bottom and fold it from the top. Now we're going to add the rest of the egg whites. So you see, super fluffy. Yeah. Quite a nice balance of like, you got like the protein, you get the fat, and like when you top it off with like the good like berries and good carbs, it's probably like a really good 
pre-workout meal. Hundred percent. Yeah, that is it. And that's the batter. So now we cook it. Now we cook it. Okay. All right. So nonstick pan is key for this one. Okay. Um, and also, I've actually heated this guy up while we were doing all that. Okay. Just because you want to be, have some residual heat, and it's gonna you're gonna cook it on the slowest that you possibly can. Like on the, the lowest, lowest setting. Lowest. Okay. So our batter, what we're gonna do is we're simply gonna take it, and we're just gonna put it in. Yeah. And you're just gonna fold it up. So the key is we're gonna try to build these high. I'll grab a little bit of water. water? That's a, a little tip is we're gonna actually steam these guys. Yeah. So okay. once you have a little bit of that steam, yeah, we're gonna cover that. And we're gonna cook that for about five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Just check on it. Yeah. Um, and then we'll build it again. And then that's on so top of that. On top of that. Okay. So that's how you get that layer. Five minutes later, we're gonna take a little like peeker. It's a little set. You see? Yeah. So this is the perfect time that we're gonna build it again. So we're gonna go. A few moments later. We ready? All right, so like I said, patience, right? Yeah. So it's been about an extra five minutes or so. Let's check it out. Oh, you can see kind of like the gold edges on some of them. Yeah, so some of them have the gold edges. Let's flip this guy again. There we are. Oh yeah. Yeah. So golden brown, a little bit, but you still gotta be gentle because they are very, very airy. That smell? Just like that little like, oof. All right, so simply, we're gonna cover that. Yeah. Extra maybe like two to five minutes. Yeah. And, and then, then we top it. And we're topping. So while that's cooking, let's stop topping. Should yeah. we do that? Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying anything. All right, so while the pancakes are finishing up on the other side, let's top toppings. Um, you're a big fan, I know. You love Greek yogurt. I see you eat Greek yogurt all the time. With dog food. Oh. <laughs> With, With dog, dog food, food, yeah. Okay, so we got this one. Yeah. Frozen berries. Yeah. Everybody usually has those in the fridge. Yeah. What key, and you did it too, and we are talking about it, is simply microwaving it. Can you get that little bit of syrup? Yeah, thing? exactly. Yeah. You can see right now, like, that's just the natural juice. So we got that syrup. And then talking about syrup. Yeah. Uh, we've got a little bit of sugar-free syrup. Farms, right? Walden Farms. Yeah. Um, you can use whatever one you want. Yeah. Um, if your Mac was allowed, obviously, you can use real maple syrup, you can yeah. use real pancake syrup. So um, I think the pancakes are done. Okay. So let's plate these guys up because yeah. I'm hungry. I don't know if you're hungry. Always hungry. We're going to plate this, not really restaurant style, but just more what looks good. Yeah, so we'll do we're going to try to build this super high. Okay, so exactly. we'll start off with one that's like sort of thicker, wider. That'll be the base. Yeah. And we'll sort of build it, maybe Jenga it out. It's so fluffy. I love it. It's so fluffy. I'm going to die. We are going to add some of your Greek yogurt. Yeah. We'll just sort of make a nice little like dollop right there. Yeah. So we're just gonna grab the berries, throw them on the top. Ooh. This is a berry mix, so you know your raspberries, 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 blueberries, everything. Perfect. And then we'll drizzle some of the sauce, just sort of around the plate. And then we're gonna do the syrup. So look at that, dude. Oh. And then lastly. When it comes to sweets, this is like a big secret for pastry chefs and even chefs in general is a little bit of salt. Oh, okay. A little I bit never of salt to do that. balances everything. A little salt bay. Yeah. Holy, look at this. That's a pre-workout meal, man. Holy crap. That's like, I'm excited to try this. Right? Isn't that like. That's crazy. Oh, I actually didn't tax. Okay, look at this bite. Cheers, man. Cheers, homie. Right? When you laugh, when you try something, you know you know it's good. That is crazy. It's different. It's super different and super easy to make. I <clears throat> promise anybody that's watching this, like, it is worth your time. Oh, absolutely. You would not know if that was a healthy recipe. Mm -hmm. No, I wouldn't know. Right? Yeah. That's the best part. And that's what I try to do. you think it's loaded with sugar and stuff. That's what I try to do is yeah. I try to teach people that if I can make a dish that I serve it to you and you don't know it's healthy, yeah. that's what you should eat. And you need this every day. Wow. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. You killed it, man. Hey, appreciate Yo. that, homie. So we just finished up the pancakes. That was quite the fantastic that experience in my mouth. That was really good. So what are we making now? Um, yeah, so we're gonna do post-workout. Okay. Post-workout meal, we're gonna take 
steak and potatoes. Yeah. But we're going to transform it into a different version, but with the same sort of techniques and show people tips and tricks on how to do it. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to do uh, butternut squash puree. Ooh, okay. We're going to do a little bit of roasted asparagus with a nice little uh, balsamic dressing. Yeah. Crazy, really great steak. Everybody needs some steak. Um, so we got some great ribeyes here. I'm surprised how like lean. It's actually a very are. lean ribeye. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be the meal. So just steak, some puree, some vegetables. The first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna do the butternut squash puree. Okay. That's gonna take the longest to cook. Butternut squash, really great. Super low carb. Yeah. Um, Pretty sure it's a very low calorie. Very low yeah. calorie. Yeah. Not. Um, so it's good. All, all good alternatives like sweet potato, potato. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also very voluminous. Yeah. Very voluminous. Like I said, just like the pancakes, volume is great. We're gonna cut it in the cubes, and simply it's gonna be one pot. So we're gonna okay. put everything in one pot. Okay. So one of the things I love to do when it comes to cooking and adding things is I add a lot of onions, garlic, shallots, very little calories, very low yeah. calories, tons of flavor. Same thing with herbs. So yeah. a lot of things you're gonna see me do today and we're gonna show you, we're gonna have a lot of those things into it. And it's a good tip, good trick to yeah. get flavor into cooking. What you wanna do is something called the claw method. Yeah. So when you have the claw method and you look at your knife, yeah. your the knife and the knuckle will never hit. So you'll never cut yourself. There's no, yeah. there, there's no way. So as long as you use that as your guide, yeah. then you're good. There you go. And then just move. Yep. So the key to onion not crying yeah. is simply... But not crying with onions? Yeah. You know I always what? cry with onions. It's because your knife is just not sharp enough. R really? Honestly, that's Ooh. it. You're Because you're breaking the membranes and it's causing you to cry. Wow. That's a pretty good tip right there, guys. So I noticed you have beef stock. Yeah, so we're gonna use stocks for a bunch of our stuff. Most recipes use water. Yeah. You make it because it doesn't rice have any and, Exactly. Yeah. So if you simply change a liquid like your water for stocks, yeah. chicken stock, beef stock, vegetable stock, seafood stock, you have flavor without adding calories. Yeah. A tip is building flavors when you're cooking. Okay. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna take some of that garlic. Yeah. And and onions, and we're gonna saute that off first. And did you just spray the pan again? No, I no sprayed oil? the pan, nope, that's it. No, no oil. oil, just the pan spray. We are gonna get this brown. Yeah. This is gonna develop the flavor. Yeah. And when that happens, then we're gonna add a butternut squash. Okay. And then we're gonna cover up with our stock. Yeah. Add our herbs. Yeah. And a little seasoning. And then we'll let that cook. Okay. How's it look? It's fantastic. Cool. So, literally, all we're gonna do now is just add some, some time. In terms of fresh herbs versus dry. Um, fresh herbs, I just, if you have it, yeah. I prefer to use it. Yeah. If you don't, dry herbs work just as well, but okay. remember they're dried so they're more concentrated. Okay, so you, so don't, you don't use it much. Yeah, so okay. like if, if you want to use a tablespoon of thyme, yeah. fresh thyme, use half a tablespoon. Okay. Of yeah. So thyme in there. Yeah. And then, like I said, instead of water, use different stocks and broths, big key. So we're gonna have some beef stock here. Just enough to cover. And you're not putting any salt and pepper in right now? Or no, no so okay. the reason why we don't salt and pepper now is because this is going to cook down. Okay. If you put it now and it reduces, yeah. it's going to get too salty. Okay. Give it a quick mix and then we'll put the lid on and then we're just going to bring it to a boil. And that's it? And then that's it. So now we're going to be doing the steak. This yes. is like, this is the star of the show. This is why I'm, I'm, yes. I'm truly excited to have a steak. Okay, right cool. Here. So there's a couple things that you have to take care of, which is flavor, yeah. uh, temperature, yeah. and moisture. Yeah. These are the three things that allow you to have a juicy, tender piece of protein. So what we're gonna do is, um, there's a method of something called brining. We with steak, I like to do it, is I do a dry brine or a dry cure, where I'm gonna put a lot of salt on it. Yeah. No real recipe. Okay. It's just literally throw a lot of salt on top, Yeah. And we're gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. What that's gonna do is that's gonna draw flavor into it. Yeah. And draw out some of that moisture. Yeah. That's all you do. That's so it. We're gonna leave it there for now, and then when we cook it, I'll teach you guys a little. bit So you don't put any like pepper or anything on it? Nope. Nope. Not not now. So a lot of people who are on diets, right? Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily get a ribeye steak. No. So like, absolutely. would this work for kind of like strip loins or like Every, inner cuts? Yeah. This works is universal for all proteins. Eat, oh, even chicken breasts and yeah. stuff. Okay. Absolutely. Good to know. Let's get ready for these veggies. So okay. we're gonna do a little bit of roasted. Um, Pan roasted asparagus. Yeah. Yep. There you go. You take that. I'll take care of the garlic. Shallots, for those that don't know, it's the same family as the onion as the garlic. It's sweeter. Yeah. You can eat it a little raw. It tastes amazing. What we have here is our asparagus. We've got our onions, yeah. shallot, garlic. Once again, no yeah. fats, nothing crazy. We're gonna add a little bit of. Um, rosemary to this later. It's super fragrant, so we don't need too much of it. So we're just gonna do that. While we're here, 
Let's do get ready for this mushroom sauce. Well, Doesn't that look scary to you guys? Like, look at those little thingies. Like, what the those hell? Those gills? We, yeah. They're called gills. They, yeah, that makes it even more scary. <laughs> We're gonna cut, cut it here. We're gonna probably cut. I, I like the sauce a little chunkier, so okay. we're gonna go a little chunky. Probably like yay thick. Oh. So you got that. Bam, bam. You wanna pick a little bit of thyme for me? Okay. We'll do a little bit of rosemary in that one too. These herbs you can interchange. You don't have to use the herbs that we're using right now. Yeah. Whatever, kind of whatever you, you like, right? Exactly. Like okay. here we've got a little extra herbage. So same thing, I'm gonna do that with the tarragon as well. For those who don't, are not familiar with tarragon, um, it's it's licorice, almost anisey, fennelish. It's gonna go great. So if you weren't gonna put a sauce on your steak, would you still have cooked the steak the same way? Just yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred. I'm just showing you guys how to use um, after you cook a steak. Yeah. In the pan, there's always stuff there, right? Mm -hmm. Most people throw that away. Yeah. You, we actually use that you to deglaze make some, it, right? We deglaze it. We make a pan sauce. All right. So everybody knows how to sort of make a salad dressing. Yeah. I personally don't like to use oils in my salad dressings. Um, I just like the more freshness. I'm gonna show you guys how to make one really, really simply. So if you wanna open me that both mustards. So I'm Dijon just, mustard. And we're gonna use some of that um, and old style crunchy mustard. Crunchy mustard. I just use that for texture. Okay. You don't have to. Okay. You can use yellow mustard if you wanted to. So we're just gonna use this to grow our base. So bam. And is there zero calories in Dijon? Okay. There's zero calories in all mustard. Yeah, okay. Except for the ones that like you- Like the honey like, mustards. Honey mustards, yeah. the creamy mustards. Like I said, no real measurement. We're gonna go equal to start. We'll see yep. what happens, right? Okay. So that's there. We'll take the vinegar. Balsamic. We'll use balsamic. Everybody has it. Yeah. Balsamic also goes great with asparagus for ribs. Yeah. Ribeye steak, mushrooms, and then now I'm a big believer in balance. So we've got something bitter. Yeah. We've got something acidic. We need something that is sweet. Yeah. So most people would probably put honey, right? Most people put honey, sugar, etc. We're gonna use Walden Farms, and then I'm actually gonna add some black pepper. Salt. See what you think. Oh, that's so good. That is a salad dressing. It could that be a marinade. Be it could be a marinade. We're gonna use it as a sauce. If you wanted to, we can actually do it. You wanna pull some thyme and Into throw it? that in there? Okay. And I will just quickly put some of that tarragon in there as well. Now give that a try. And it'll be a totally different, like, different sauce. But with just one step. Yo, oh, man. It gets this extra, right? We have pretty much set, and the next things <laughs> we're all going to do is just cook. It's pretty, okay. Um, so we basically repaired everything, every component. Exactly. That's okay. so. That's what I like to do when I teach people to cook. All right. So, butter and squash, brought it to a boil. Right. All right. So we're gonna do a puree. Pretty simple. Take your favorite Vitamix blender, whatever you got. You're just gonna find that time. Yeah, and take it out. Yeah. If you can find time, <laughs> take that out. We're gonna just take the butternut squash and this will season after. Okay, interesting. So this you don't use? So the no, we keep, we keep. Oh, you keep? Okay. Yeah, we keep. Trust me. There, and there's a big reason why we keep it is... Try that. It's quite nice. Right? It's quite nice. And all it is is just your butternut squash. So we're gonna puree this guy. And we'll see where it happens because it already has naturally some liquid. Yeah. So it might not be, you don't, might not even need this. But okay. if you do, then we have it. We want it to be super smooth. Yeah. So this is a time where you can add that liquid. Okay. But you don't want to add all of it at the same time. So just add enough that, you know, base it maybe one at a time. Give it a quick mix. Yeah, that looks good. Squash puree. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wow, that's interesting. That's so you're gonna put the steak here. You use this pan spray as well. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, <clears throat> know your techniques. Then it's very easy to cook other things. Okay. So we're just gonna heat this guy up. We're gonna start off building the flavors. So yeah. we built the flavors with our butternut okay. squash. So with let's the start with thing. onions and garlic again. Yeah. Build your foundation. Okay. Okay. So now we're gonna add asparagus. Okay. The really gorgeously cut. Well yeah. done. Well yeah. done. The colors already look amazing. So that's another big part too. Yeah. When you eat with your eyes first. So yeah. Give that a mix. Remember that butter and squash liquid we had? Yeah. We had some extra. Just took that. Okay. So I'm gonna we're gonna use that to deglaze the pan. Okay. Cool. All right. So we're actually gonna add the shallots. Okay. The reason I didn't want to add them in the first place is I don't want them to really get that browning. I okay. want that onion taste. Rosemary. Yeah. 
So we're going to add a little bit of our deglazing just to start that. All right, now we're going to add the sauce that we had. Okay. So we're going to throw that in, give that a mix, and we're we'll going to turn the heat down a bit, and we're going to add the liquid. So we'll go back and we'll get going on our steaks. You see all that liquid that's coming up? Yeah. There's not too much. Yeah. But what this has done is actually firm up your steak. Okay. So we're going to just rinse this off. So the key is we want this to be pretty dry. Yeah. And if you saw what we did was we didn't put it in the fridge. Yeah. We left it out here because what you want for a Room really temperature. Good steak, right? Room temperature is the key. If the steak is cold, yeah. the pan is hot. Yeah. What's going to happen is the outside's going to cook way faster than the inside. Yeah. How do you like your steaks? I like a medium rare. Medium rare. Yeah. Perfect. If yeah. you don't have a thermometer, what you can do is you have one right here, your hand. Yeah. So if you do this, if you yeah, follow me here, this touch that. That's yeah. rare. That's rare. Okay. Do this. Medium. Medium rare. Okay. Medium. Okay. Medium well. Yeah. When you get to this point, you well can't done. be friends. Yeah. That's like shoe leather. Yeah. And then, so when you touch your meat, touch yeah. this, same thing. Yeah. Um, you and if you, want, if, you, <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you want to get medium rare, yeah. cook it to, uh, cook it just before this. Yeah. So a steak like this, people talk about temperature. Yeah. I always like to go with a side of caution. Okay. Um, it's hard to tell people a perfect time. What I like to say is check it, get at least a one minute or two minute on one side. Okay. Flip it, one minute or two minute, and then go again, one minute, one minute, okay. one minute. That's the most- Everyone usually says you flip it and you put it down and you only flip it one time. Yep. So that's not, that's not necessarily true. No, not necessarily true. All right, so it's been about two minutes or so on one side. We're gonna flip it now. So that's you want medium rare, right? Yeah. Let's do that touch. Yeah. Touch the meat. Give it a shot if you want. Just feel and see what where is that? What on that on that level of it feels like it's like rare? It's, in, like, it's, it's like, like rare getting to medium rare. Exactly. So yeah. what that means is we're almost there. Yeah. So I want to show you how to sort of do a little basting. So we're gonna turn this down. If you want to crush a garlic in there. Like you mean yeah. the whole thing? Whole peel and all. And then we're gonna throw in our rosemary. And what this does is we're actually seasoning the pan. What I do is I'll just add a little spray. Okay. Just to help it a bit. And then just that in itself will air will um, give flavor to the pan. I'll flip this guy back. Look at that. Let's flip this guy too. So we're gonna actually turn this off now. Yeah. And we're gonna need to let this rest. Yeah. So what it happens, you make, took all that time yeah. to create that nice crust. Yeah. If you put it right onto the plate, the moisture will cause that crust to just not be crispy anymore. Wow. So that is the little thing. So that's a that's a good tip. Yeah. So we're gonna take that and just right on top. Whoa. So right on top, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some of that rosemary. Because the residual heat is gonna keep cooking these steaks. So there's gonna be flavor adding into it. So I'm just gonna drop these guys on. We're gonna go into our mushroom sauce now. Okay. There's this pan, all this flavor is there. Yeah. We don't wanna waste it. So we're gonna actually make something called the pan pan sauce. Yeah. Spray it a little bit. Put the mushrooms in. Just the mushrooms? Yep, just the mushrooms. Okay. Throw in your shallots. So we're gonna now deglaze. Okay. Same thing, beef stock? Same thing, beef stock, stuff that we have at home. And this, now you're gonna scrape some of all that stuff from the bottom. Whoa, that's hot. <laughs> you're gonna scrape all that stuff from the bottom of the pan. And we're just gonna reduce this. So okay. all this liquid, we're gonna reduce it by half. We're gonna add all our herbs. I'm gonna add a splash of balsamic. Okay. The only reason is that it's very deep. You want something to liven it up. Yeah. You could add lemon juice, you can add wine. I'm just adding a little bit of balsamic and then turn the heat off. I'm just gonna season with a little bit of salt. And that's it. So uh, we'll clean up and then we'll get to plating. Okay, everything's cooked. Now we just have to plate it. The steak has been rested. Yeah. Um, the sort of rule is how much, how long you cook your steak yeah. or cook your protein. Okay. Rest it for half that time. Okay. So we've cooked it for about 10 minutes. Okay, so you rest it for five. About five minutes. Okay. Let's see how what we did. Oh man. Look at that.
smell it, I'm getting angry right now. I'm getting angry. I'm getting, like I'm getting hungry. It's like that hangry. Good. Yeah. Two different versions. Check this out. I, I gotta like, I have to cut into this right now. Let's do it. Eat, man. Yeah. Fork. Fork. Yes. Knife. Knife. Thank you. Let's go. Yeah. Restaurant style. Home style. Do it, man. No fat has added in here. No extra fat. No butter. No cream. No dairy. And that's your basic, literally, bodybuilder. We are, no, all fitness people will know this, you know? Your basic steak, your wow. asparagus, squash. You that's can change it. ridiculous. Okay, guys. Herbs, right? That asparagus, you have to make it. Like, because everyone eats asparagus on a diet. Everybody That's does. crazy. That's actually nuts. All right, so there's always a misconception that restaurant style food sort of tastes better. Played it looks same. better. It like, looks better, better, absolutely. Yeah. But let's try it and you tell me if it tastes better. Because I feel like when you play stuff like this, there's like a reason why you played it that way, right? Like there's like you have this thing you want to drag into the pepper. Exactly. Right? So. Man, you killed it. Pass me. Like, past my expectations. Glad. So, like, I want to tell them, like, I, I think the people need to, like, try this stuff. So, like, tell them a little bit about your ebook and kind of what you do. Yeah. And, like, yeah, so I um, just launched an ebook called How, How to Survive a Diet, and that's really all it is. It's not recipes. I don't teach you, per se, how to make this dish or this dish or that thing. What I teach you is tips, tricks, techniques. Everything that we've shown is to teach you how to cook already with what you know at home. So kind of like how to season your food? And like, Seasoning, okay. tips and tricks, like you know, your steaks thing, your brining and all that. And um, it's there, it's, it's been something that I've used throughout all my dieting when I competed. Um, so it's like over 50 pages. Over okay. 50 pages Crazy. of tips and tricks with over 24 recipes, um, sauces, spice blends, all that. The whole thing is six pack chef. So okay. that's, what, that's who I am, that's my brand. Um, I do media consulting, as you know, uh, product development, fitness stuff. And yeah, I love doing this. I love yeah. doing this and the goal is to, it shows, show, man. Is to show people yeah. you can eat great food, yeah. you can still live a healthy lifestyle, have mm. fun doing it, and it also allows me to connect with people yeah. like yourself. Yeah, unreal, man. So I'm gonna put the link to the ebook in the description. I am about to go all in on this one. I'm, I, I can't share it. Um, so that is gonna wrap up the video, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank if you guys you. enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.